So next subject we study is employment and labor law of the Russian Federation. Employment and labor law of the Russian Federation is regulated by the Constitution of the Russian Federation and by labor code, employment code of the Russian Federation. So labor legislation does not cover members of board of directors of legal entities if such members of board of directors do not have labor agreement with the company. If they do have labor agreement, then labor legislation will cover their relationship with the company as well. And labor legislation does not cover contractors under civil law contracts. So here civil code will be enforced. So let's decide the question, are there any limitations to employ foreigners? And the answer is no. So no discrimination must be on Russian territory under the Constitution of the Russian Federation and under the Employment Code. Of course, for foreigners there are higher requirements. So foreigners, if they are from visa countries, must have working visa. Foreigners must have permission to be employed, but these are not limitations, so only just higher requirements. Then employee and independent contractor, main differences here. So employee enjoys protection under the labor code, independent contractor under the civil code. When we made previous case in tort, we said that not employee but employer is liable for wrongful acts of employee which is not the case of the contractor, because contractor itself is liable for its wrongful acts. Employer pays all taxes for employee. When we speak about contractor, contractor pays himself. Of course, there are tax agents on Russian territory, but generally contractor pays taxes himself. For employee of the company, minimum monthly amount of wages and salaries is provided. So minimum monthly amount of wages and salaries under labor law is right now 3,300 rubles of the Russian Federation. So it is complete different minimum monthly salary amount than that amount which will study when we deal with corporate law, when we deal with contract law, administrative law and other matters. When we deal with labor law, we have special minimum monthly amount of wages and salaries, which is 3,300 rubles. If we speak about contractor, there is no minimum requirement for payment. So, for the contract to be onerous, one rubble is enough. If we speak about redundancy payments, платежи в случае сокращения, so independent contractor does not have any rights concerning redundancy payments. If we speak about employee, employee has such rights. Let's see what are rights of employee in case of redundancy. So, employee must be informed on redundancy at least two months prior to the redundancy, prior to terminate the contract with employee. What it means? It means that employee will work two months before agreement with him will be terminated. So these two months give employee two months salary and gives possibility to find another job during these two months. So it is possible that employer agrees with employee that employee will not work during these two months 
and labor agreement will be terminated prior because employer quite understands that employee has no initiative now to work for the company as labor agreement will be terminated anyway. So two months prior employee shall be either informed or even if employee does not work during these two months, employer still pays these two months salaries to employee. Plus one monthly salary shall be paid to employee as redundancy payment. So three monthly salaries employee gets at the moment of termination of the contract on redundancy. Moreover, during two more months, employee stays on payroll. So if employee does not find any job, employer will pay these two months to employee later when these two months pass. In certain extraordinary cases, term may be prolonged up to three months. If during this term employee finds a job but job is lower paid, so his former employer shall compensate the difference. So if we speak about contractor, here no rights concerning redundancy payments. Then employee shall observe in-house labor rules and working schedule. So if it is provided that working day is from 9 to 6, then it is not possible that employee fulfills its job duties at 4 and leaves working place working day from 9 to 6. Opposite with independent contractor, so independent contractor does not have a right to observe in-house labor rules and working schedule. So if we speak about contractor, in contractor result is most important. If we speak about employee, here process is more important. And, of course, employer owes greater duty, duty to... Тут вырежу, ладно? And, of course, employer owes greater duty regarding health and safety at work. So, labor agreement. Labor agreement is written agreement which is signed by both employer and employee. Labor agreement is concluded in two copies and employee must sign on the copy of the employer that employee has received its copy of labor agreement. Labor agreement provides that employer shall provide employee with work, ensure proper labor conditions, well pay remuneration in full and in time, and labor remuneration shall be paid to employee at least twice a month. So it is mandatory provision of law and it is not possible to change it in the labor agreement. Also, employer provides social insurance if we speak about industry sectors. Employee shall personally carry out work. So it is not possible that employee says, oh, today I do not want to come to work, but my sister can do the job for me. And employee shall observe in-house labor rules. So, who may be employer? It may be legal entity or natural person. Natural persons may be simple natural persons who uh, are not individual entrepreneur and who require domestic help or nannies. They also have to conclude contracts with employees, but we are interested in individual entrepreneurs. So individual entrepreneurs in terms of employment have the same rights as legal entities. 
So they carry out labor books, they have same obligations regarding to pension fund, to salary, etc., etc. So for course of corporate and business law, we're interested in employers, individual entrepreneurs or legal entities. In labor agreement, there are two types of conditions. Mandatory conditions, obligatory conditions and additional conditions. So, mandatory condition, place of work. And here there may be additional condition, elaboration of the place of work. What it means? So, for example, place of work is bank Z. But bank Z have many branches in Moscow region quite far one from another. So if place of work is identified as bank Z, so it is possible to move employee to these branches without his consent. And in Moscow region, between different branches, there will be around 400 kilometers. If you elaborate place of work, so in the contract it is written bank Z, branch A, so you understand where you work, and if employer wants to move you to another branch, so your permission is required. Then concerning mandatory conditions, it is date of beginning of work, it is position of employee, description of working conditions, schedule of working hours and rest. So it may be five days working week with two weekends, it may be six days working week with one weekend, it may be working in shift, so two days rest two days work up to employer, but it must be provided in the labor agreement. Remuneration size and system must be provided directly. So before it was possible to provide labor remuneration according to the schedule. Now it is not possible, so directly the sum of labor remuneration must be provided in labor agreement. So, compensations for employees who work at hazardous jobs, terms of the character of work and terms on mandatory social insurance. What is important concerning terms of labor agreement? So, terms of labor agreement that are not provided in the contract does not make this labor agreement invalid. So it is the responsibility of employer. Law, labor inspection may fine the employer, but if such labor conditions not provided, still labor agreement is valid. If we speak about additional labor uh, conditions, so additional terms of labor agreement, it is up to the parties to introduce them into labor agreement or not to introduce them into labor agreement. So other additional terms, probation period, confidentiality clause, and employee must understand what is means by confidentiality, not everything, but particular cases of confidentiality. Employee must understand to whom it is possible to give such information. Quite often legal entity states that salary is confidential clause, but of course employee may speak to HR manager on salary because HR manager knows the amount of salary employee receives. So, uh, employee's obligation to work for a certain period after training affected for account of employer, types and terms of additional insurance, improvement of social conditions of employee or his family and other terms are additional terms of the labor agreement. So labor agreement is generally agreement concluded for indefinite period. 
In narrow cases, it is possible to conclude labor agreement for definite period, but up to five years. So, in certain cases provided by employment code, it is obligatory to conclude fixed term labor agreement. So, you should know a couple of situations. For example, to substitute temporarily absent employee. So, we have employee who went to take care of a child, so born a child, and it is possible to take care of a child for up to three years in the Russian Federation. So, a contract with a newly hired may be concluded maximum until this person comes back, so this woman comes back. So, with employees at short term up to two months jobs, with employees at seasonal jobs, with persons directed to work abroad, what else? Uh, in organizations set up for definite period, uh, with persons employed to perform specific job. So, in these cases, legal entity must conclude fixed term labor agreement. In certain cases, it is possible under the agreement of employer and employee to conclude fixed term labor agreement. So, in small business entities, with retired persons due to age limit, with chief executive officer, with by workers совместителями. So, what is important here? That if your case does not belong to mandatory case of concluding fixed term labor agreement or to the possibility of agree with employer to conclude fixed term labor agreement, so it is not possible to conclude fixed term labor agreement with you. So, fixed term labor agreement may be cancelled upon expiry. So, term has finished on 1st of November 2009. Employer must inform employee at least three days prior that fixed term labor agreement terminates, so it terminates. It may be renewed for definite term or it may be recognized as renewed for indefinite term. First situation here. So, your agreement has expired on 1st of November 2009, but on 2nd of November 2009 you appeared at your working place and employer did not say anything. That means that your fixed term labor agreement has not expired and became an agreement for indefinite period of time. And labor inspection may come to check activity of employer and checking activity of employer labor inspection understands that there were no reasonable grounds to conclude fixed term labor agreement. So, labor inspection may oblige employer to conclude renewed agreement for indefinite period of time. Of course, there are certain restrictions to employ and normally they cause minors or women labor. So, minors may not be employed at jobs with hazardous conditions, at jobs that may damage their health or morals, at jobs implying heavy lifting. The same situation with women, they may not be, impl uh, they may not be employed in jobs implying lifting and carrying of heavy items. Also, there are legal prohibitions to work for persons at educational field, 
under the court decision due to previous convictions or due to medical statement. When labor agreement enters into force. So, general case labor agreement enters into force on the day signed by both parties. Let's suppose you signed labor agreement on 23rd of October 2009. What it means? It means that you must start working from the next day after signing of the agreement. So, from 24th of October 2009. Labor agreement may enter into force on the day stipulated in this labor agreement. So you signed labor agreement on 23rd of October 2009 that you start working in the company from 1st of December 2009. So on 1st of December 2009 you must come to work. If you do not appear at your working place on 1st of December or in the first case on the 24th of October 2009, your employer may abolish labor agreement. And next case means that you started working on 1st of December 2009 but without concluding labor agreement. Labor agreement was concluded only on 3rd of December 2009. So what it means? It means that labor agreement, even if it is concluded on 3rd of December, is in force from 1st of December 2009. And employer must conclude labor agreement within three days from the moment you de facto started working for the company. Concerning probation period, we know that probation period is additional condition. What it means? It means that if probation period clause is not included into labor agreement, so person is hired without probation. What means person is hired without probation? It means that termination of labor agreement is possible only on the grounds provided by the labor legislation and we will study these limited grounds provided by employment code. So at probation it is possible to dismiss a person at any grounds informing him at least three days prior. Same situation with employee. So employee also informs employer three days prior employee wants to dismiss from the company at probation period. Probation period is not forever. General case it is up to three months. For top managers including chief executive officer, chief accountant, Deputy Chief Executive Officer, it may be up to six months. And there are certain persons for whom probation may never established. Persons hired for short-term jobs up to two months, persons transferred from another job, minors up to 18 years of age, Recent graduates with the first year of graduation, persons selected after competition, persons elected, expected mothers and women with children up to one year and a half, and law or collective labor agreement may provide other cases when probation is not possible. So let's suppose main employer set probation period in case of promotion of an employee to a higher position. The answer here is no, because probation period is set at the moment of conclusion of the contract and it is not possible 
to add probation period as amendment to the contract. Main employer dismiss an expected mother on the ground that she did not pass probation period. Again, the answer is no. Here, why? Because if we were attentive, we saw that it is not possible to establish probation period for expected mothers. If we speak about collective labor agreement, in collective labor agreement, a representative of all employees of the company or of certain groups of employees of the company concludes agreement with employer. And such labor agreement normally is concluded when labor code is silent on certain matters or when better conditions for particular group of employees is required. So, collective labor agreement is subject to state registration but enters into force not from the moment of state registration, but from the moment of its conclusion. And, of course, changes of chief executive officer or other management bodies of the company does not change collective labor agreement. Collective labor agreement is for definite period and maximum period is three years. So, collective labor agreement may stipulate forms, systems, volumes of labor remuneration, works of regulation of the labor remuneration, payment of pensions compensations, work and rest regimes, full or partial payment of food supply of employees, and observation of interest of employees while privatization of state or municipal property. If we speak about rights and obligations of employee and employer, here we have MIRO. So, if we have basic rights of employee, that means that employee is empowered to claim from employer and employer must provide it to employee. So, rights of employee be provided with work stipulated in the labor agreement. It means that employer must, so it is obligation of the employer to provide employee with work. If employer does not have any work, it is problem of the employer, still employer must pay labor remuneration in full and in time as employee is entitled to receive labor remuneration in full and in time. So, employer may conclude, amend or dissolve labor agreements. Employer may demand from employees to perform their job duties properly. That means obligations of employee to perform work properly to comply with in-house labor rules. So, mirror here. So, there are plenty of cases of termination of labor agreement, basic cases provided by labor code, by employment code. So, what is must, what you must know? You must know parties' mutual consent. At any time, it is possible to terminate labor agreement if parties agree on it. Then, expiry of fixed-term labor agreement. So, we said you have labor agreement finished on 1st of December 2009. So, employer informs you that employer will not renew labor agreement with you. So, expiry of fixed-term labor agreement terminates labor agreement. Then, employee's initiative. Employee's initiative. So, you want to dismiss from the company. You serve two weeks written notice to employer. On 15th day, 
it is possible for you not to come to work in place. Employer must substitute you. Employer must pay you all payments necessary for you and must give you labor book. And employer's initiative. So you must know these four cases. Right now we will speak about employer's initiative. And you must know something else. So plenty of other cases you should know something else. So something else, for example, employee's refusal to transfer to another work when such transfer is required due to relocation of employer. So Constitutional Court of the Russian Federation has recently moved from Moscow to St. Petersburg. So employees who did not want to move, labor agreement was terminated with them or circumstances beyond control of the parties. So, for example, disqualification. A person is a driver of a bus and state inspection withdraws his driving license and disqualifies him from driving. So, circumstances beyond control of the parties also terminate labor agreement. And then we come to employer's initiative. When employer, under its own initiative, may terminate the contract. So, case of liquidation. Liquidation means total termination of the legal entity with no succession of its rights and obligations. So, in case of liquidation, it is possible to dismiss all employees including women with children or even expected mothers. Case of redundancy, so we started redundancy. In case of redundancy, not all employees may be dismissed. So in case of redundancy, it is possible to dismiss only employees which are subject to being redundant. Again, expected mothers or persons with family obligations are not subject to redundancy. Also, of course, there must be objective criteria of redundancy. So, legal entity must stop a line or now financial crisis, crisis causes redundancy. If employer just wants to dismiss one employee and to hire a new one, it is not redundancy. Then, because of poor condition of health or poor qualification, employee may be dismissed. So, poor condition of health under the result of medical examination and poor qualification under the result of attestation. Employees multiple failure to perform job duties with no valid reasons. Even if day after day you are late to come to the office, so it is multiple failure. And after a certain period of time, it is possible for employer to dismiss you. Gross violation of job duties. Gross violation of job duties, for example, transi, pragu. So when a person has not appeared at the working place for more than four hours. It is possible to dismiss such person. Immoral behavior, when we speak about educational field, especially schools. So, chief executive officer have weakest position in terms of termination of the contract. Because change of property owners of non-commercial legal entity terminates powers of chief executive officer. In case damage was inflicted to organizational property, in case of bankruptcy of the legal entity, or at any time, including at vacation or at sick leave, it is possible to terminate an agreement with chief executive officer by the body who appointed chief executive officer. So, if chief executive officer was appointed by the board of directors, board of directors 
may terminate agreement with chief executive officer, or if chief executive officer was appointed by general meeting of shareholders, so general meeting of shareholders may terminate agreement with chief executive officer at absolutely any time. And false information submitted by the employee for labor agreement, for example, false diploma, also terminates labor agreement under the employer's initiative. So let's suppose if an employee does not appear at his working place and does not go into work, so more than four hours, so trans occurs, is it legal to dismiss him? And here a question is for discussion, because from one point of view, yes, it is legal to dismiss him. But you must have certain evidence that employee does not appear at work with no valid reasons. Otherwise, in two weeks after you have dismissed an employee, he will appear at the working place and will claim all the salary for this leave when you dismissed him. Employment code also gives additional guarantees to persons with family obligations. So persons with family obligations may claim additional days of rest under the consent of the employer. Younger persons, so it is not possible to put full financial liability on younger persons. Persons combining jobs, so by workers, so they may have annual leave without working all six months required to get annual leave. Educational specialists, so we speak here about longer holidays. And many guarantees are provided to employees. So sick leaves are paid. If there are injuries at work, so expenses shall be incurred by the employer. If employee is transferred to lower paid jobs, so certain amount of money is due. If employee is combining working and studying, so here additional un unpaid leave shall be provided, shorter working week and reimbursement for a round trip to travel to educational institution. Poor condition of health and employee is dismissed to weak average remuneration shall be paid. And in case of redundancy, employer must first offer employee another job and severance pay and plus living on payroll. So now let's do problem-based case. Mr. Brown, UK citizen, was invited to work with the Russian Scientific Center. Center suggested Mr. Brown to sign labor agreement. As he has never been to Russia and has no idea of Russian legal system, he has got several questions, the answers for which will help him to take the decision whether to accept the invitation or not. Will it be possible for the parties to the labor contract to introduce changes there to and how? Is it possible to demand an employee to fulfill additional employment duties other than those provided for in the contract? If Mr. Brown signs the contract, within which period of time must he start working with new employer? And is it possible to introduce any probation period for Mr. Brown? As you see, we have problem-based question. But questions asked are purely theoretical. So you answer theory and attain to this particular case. So first question, will it be possible for the parties to the labor contract to introduce changes there to and how? Two marks are awarded. First of all, you have to give definition. What is labor contract? So labor contract is normal agreement written agreement between the parties, signed by both employer and employee. 
if it is signed by both employer and employee and it is written so same procedure will be applied to changes of the contract so yes it is possible to introduce changes to labor agreement but they must be in written form and signed by both parties to labor agreement next question is it possible to demand employee to fulfill additional employment duties other than those provided for in the contract so we know that there are certain mandatory conditions of the contract and one of mandatory conditions of the contract is point providing duties of employee so duties that may be required from employee are only duties provided by this labor agreement in extraordinary cases it is possible for employer to ask employee to fulfill additional labor duties for example to prevent industrial accident but it is not possible to demand employee to fulfill additional labor duties next question for three marks so if mr brown signs the contract within which period of time must he start to work with his new employer so how mr brown may sign the contract it may be provided in the contract that it enters into force from the moment of signing what it means it means that today mr brown signed the contract tomorrow mr brown must start working so if mr brown does not appear tomorrow at his working place employer may abolish labor agreement with mr brown another case it may be directly provided in the contract from which date it comes into force so it is provided that from 1st of december 2009 contract is in force and mr brown must appear at his working place on 1st of december so mr brown must appear on 1st of december 2009 date provided in the contract again three marks are awarded for the question concerning probation is it possible to introduce any probation period for the employee so what we must put here probation period is additional clause so only if both parties agree it is possible to introduce probation period there are certain limits for probation period up to three months in general case and up to six months in case of top managers and there are certain persons to whom it is not possible to introduce probation period so for example for persons elected so if mr brown does not belong to such persons to whom it is not possible to stipulate probation period then yes it is possible to stipulate probation period at the moment of conclusion of the contract